With a radiant smile, Ellie Souter looks like any other carefree young woman enjoying her relative's wedding. But, less than four weeks later, this British snowboarding star committed suicide on her 18th birthday. Poignantly, her family has chosen this beautiful black and white photograph to grace her coffin at her funeral on Thursday. Her uncle Jeremy Souter said, she was her bubbly, effervescent self at the wedding. She enjoyed it so much. She was in great spirits and was really just the lovely Ellie that she is. You could never have anticipated this. This is the last photo we can find of Ellie and it shows her as the beautiful person she was and will always be. Ellie and her devoted father Tony travel from the home in Les Gets, France, to attend the June 30th wedding of a cousin of Tony's in Bromley, Kent. R.I.P. Ellie Souter, Team GB passes away on 18th birthday, placement, inline, duration, 32, id, 5,814,272,993,001, uploader, Patrick Purcell, source, 06BEF9C752FF856FCDFB6F8F237B9C80, content vertical, undefined, site, undefined, clearance, network, Source L, Hasket Video, False, Interaction, Name ID, 12,998,878, Features, Preload Fonts, True, External Brands, True, GDPR Consent Enabled, True, Video. Suppressed X, True, Chameleon. Cookie Policy. Enabled, False, PWA Track Offline, True, Bundled CSS, False, Recommendations, HTTPS colon slash slash map. Data. Tm dash AWX. Com Slash RHS Modulix, true, Nativia, Banat, true, greater than Jeremy said, her father Tony is a broken man. He keeps going through everything. But there were just no signs at all. She's as bright as a button the day before, happy, excited about life. This is the thing that's killing her father Tony, 53, paid tribute to her saying, For this day on every snowflake that falls on Lesgets will have been written by Ellie first, in tribute to her amazing short life, he pledged to create a foundation in her name to fund budding British snow sport athletes. He will launch the Ellie Souter Foundation to enable young athletes to compete on par with other nations. Ellie Souter was set for a top snowboarding career, now a foundation named after will help others. Jeremy, CEO at Carney Global Fund Managers, said, The UK is not a skiing nation and that makes it so much harder for kids like Ellie to compete. It means there is so much more pressure. In France the snowboarders and skiers get full funding. She was stressed about the amount of financial support she needed from her father all the time. He always wanted to do the best for her but never in any way did he pressure her. All he wanted was for Ellie to be happy. And she loved the sport. But she felt like she let him down if she didn't win a race or miss training. Funding never actually stopped Ellie doing anything. It's more the fact that there is zero funding support for athletes like Ellie and that's the reason Tony will launch the Ellie Souter Foundation. It's something very positive he can put his energy into Ellie pictured with her devoted dad Tony Souter. Image Facebook Hundreds of mourners are expected to attend Ellie's funeral in Lesgets on Thursday. There will be a service in the church, followed by a private cremation. Tony will scatter his beloved daughter's ashes on her favorite mountain, Mont Cherry in Les Gets. Ellie, who had lived with her father in France since 2009, had recently been selected to represent Team GB at the Junior Snowboard World Championships in New Zealand next month. 
she had been tipped to represent her country at the 2022 Winter Olympics. Tony, who heads the French office of Midas Kitchens, last saw Ellie at 8am on Wednesday when he went to say goodbye before going to work. He went into her bedroom to wish her happy birthday but she was fast asleep. He texted her later that morning but there was no response. When he returned home for lunch, Ellie was not there. Team GB's Ellie Suter died at the age of just 18 Jeremy said, he didn't think there was anything untoward that she wasn't there for lunch. But by 6pm he still hadn't been able to get her on her mobile and it was her birthday. He also noted that her purse was at home. He called the police, sniffer dogs were deployed in the search. They picked up her scent at the house and police then began searching in nearby woodland. Jeremy said, it was 11.15pm when they found her. There was no note, nothing. She was somewhere you can hardly access. She must have just kept walking and walking. Police struggled to get there.